Over the last few decades in medicine and science, I have realized that nature has really one rule, which is adaptation. And the purpose of that adaptation is to create biodiversity. And the biodiversity allows for the beauty of this planet to occur. Beneath my feet are six to 10 species of, of macroflora in the form of different mosses. There's also hundreds of species of different plant life around me here, in the low brush all the way to the, the trees around me. And this forest has been developing the capacity for biodiversity over billions of years. And that journey into biodiversity has been accelerated by stress. And so interestingly, it's the stress of death of a tree, for example, that then gives life its full potential. When one of these oak trees falls from age onto the forest floor, that one species with one genetic code within one year will give life to 100,000 species within the trunk of that tree that's now decaying in the forest floor. And so it is the death of one species that provides the life for 100,000 others to come forth. That's the pattern of nature. Every time there is an opportunity for growth, it's not one species that replaces one species, it's diversification of species within that space that allows nature to occur. And the result is dumbfounding. I'm standing here in an absolute symphony of greens. Around me is also the sound of cicada, birds, tree frogs, and the like. This nature is surrounding me with vibration. That vibration, it can express itself as color, it can express itself as sound, it can even express itself in the experience of scent or smell. My sense of touch to the texture of a leaf or the soft moss below my feet. These experiences are connecting me back to a nature that is striving to create more diversity, seemingly for the purpose of more beauty. And I stand here within it as a species that for hundreds of years now has been trying to engineer itself out of nature. We have build, been building houses, offices, cars, and everything else in an effort for constant, unchanging comfort. 72 degrees all the time, same humidity. We create air conditioning systems, we create doors and windows, and more and more isolation from the nature around us. Furthermore, out of that pursuit of convenience, we have created technologies that are supposed to make things like farming far simpler. Every time we have reached for convenience, we have tended to destroy nature's diversity. Over these last few decades, we have accelerated this process. It's now estimated that we have created 10,000 fold increase in the rate of extinction of species over these few decades. Now we have come to realize that this was our own demise. It turns out that nature has created a vast array of checks and balances that allow us to either thrive or die within her system. This really can be boiled down to the phenomenon of the microbiome. The term microbiome has now become perhaps overused in, in the media and other places, and perhaps remains very misunderstood. The microbiome is a description of an ecosystem, complex biodiversity within your gut, within your skin, within all of the organs of your body, including things like the brain and the central nervous system that we thought were sterile for, for most of human history, suddenly realizing that each of these systems are supplied and, and nurtured by the microbiome within them. Nature as a whole, the soil beneath our feet, the air we breathe, is teeming with life. This biodiversity of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and beyond it turns out is providing the very foundation for life to occur. For life to occur, especially in something as complicated as a, a mammal or a human being, requires an enormous amount of communication. To coordinate the symphony of 70 trillion human cells, it takes an enormous amount of information transfer from cell to cell, from organ to organ, and beyond. What we discovered in 2012 and 2013 in our laboratories is that the bacteria and fungi within our gut and within our soil systems is creating this communication network. It's humbling to find that nature designed the coordination of life not within human cells, but within the, the humble bacteria, the humble fungi. 
these single-celled organisms are creating the liquid circuit board, the information transfer system, the wireless communication for life to coordinate into the multicellular organisms that would come later. And so from an earthworm to a bird to a human, it's an example of increasing complexity of communication at the cellular level. To achieve that, the bacteria and fungi produce a family of large carbon molecules that we've come to, to refer to as carbon snowflakes because each species makes a different version of these carbon molecules. These carbon molecules are capable of releasing and abs absorbing hydrogen molecules. Hydrogen is one of the most prominent gases within our atmosphere and ultimately within our soil systems and beyond. And that transfer of hydrogen on and off oxygen and carbon moieties allows us to really realize a liquid circuit board type phenomenon where you're getting constant exchange of information, a stream of electrons moving through tissue or moving through soil systems to allow the coordination of complex cellular communication. Ion was our journey back into the reconnection of nature. Historically, all human guts made plenty of this communication network. But with the advent of antibiotics in the 1940s and then the huge herbicide and pesticide markets that exploded in the 1950s and 60s and beyond, we started to inundate soil systems, plant systems, and ultimately the human gut and the human body as a whole in these herbicide and pesticide residues. Herbicides are prim primarily based on the concept of organophosphates. These are complex molecules that are salts that allow for the killing of bacteria and fungi. The most common is glyphosate. Glyphosate is the backbone of Roundup, the famous weed killer that is probably in your garage and is being sprayed up and down your streets and then along highway sides as, as well as in the, in the vast farming system globally. These antibiotics have diminished the, the microbiome within the human experience, within the human life form. And so over these last 50 years, we've seen the destruction of soil systems within the human gut and within 97% of the farmable lands of the, of the planet. And so in that demise of biodiversity within the bacteria and fungi in my gut, I become prone to immune dysfunction and disease later on. And so what we are doing with ION is reconnecting you to the original intelligence that allowed you to occur in the first place as a human being and reconnecting you to that nature allows you to, to realize your full potential as a being, as a human body. That communication network serves a second purpose, which I find to be so eloquent about nature. She doesn't do, do one thing for the purpose of one thing. She always layers the, the capacity and function within her nature. And the layered function here comes down to nutrient delivery. So those same carbon molecules that we are able to supercharge in our production system to carry hydrogen again, we're able to also carry nutrients. And so by adding mineral amino acid complexes to the carbon snowflakes, we're able to deliver the micronutrients that make the enzymes in your body function, that make protein synthesis possible, that really build the human body into its full capacity. So ultimately, ION is the communication network to coordinate life and deliver the nutrients necessary for that life form to thrive.